So I got the uh, airbag diagnostic module from my 94 Bronco. It was the airbag light was flashing a code 51, which is internal thermal fuse blown due to intermittent short to ground. And uh, I read up on this. It says what you gotta do is you gotta find the short, get rid of it, and then you gotta replace this whole unit, this whole piece. You're supposed to replace it. I called the junkyard and they quoted me $55 for this unit. Now considering that there's only one tiny part inside of it that's broken and the rest is fine, that seems like a big waste of money to me. So I'm going to just fix it the way some other guys that saw it did it. Um, what they did is they just replaced just the thermal fuse. Uh, they got this from Goodman's. I got mine here. You can see those. There's a 167 degree thermal fuses. I got three of them just in case I mess up. The one inside there is 168, but since it's only one degree lower, it shouldn't affect it uh, since it'll be blowing like one degree sooner if it does blow. But I got these from Newark.com and they're based in Illinois. Uh, I got here in a couple business days, so I'm pretty happy with that since it was basic UPS ground. So uh, I'll get this open and then we'll unsolder the thermal fuse and replace it with one of these ones. And you get this open and just take your hand and you got these little tabs here you just pull outward it's easier once you've done it before but it's not too hard the first time either you just gotta pull this up pull the blue piece outward the same time. There's one on the end. And I got that off. Now get this out. You want to just gently turn it up like that and lift it out. We'll put this to the side and we'll flip it over. You can see you got some ICs, capacitor, uh, a little buzzer. And then we got the thermal fuse right here. This is the, the thermal fuse is this little thing right here. It's a little black and white casing and that actually houses two things. It houses a 15 ohm resistor and a thermal fuse like that one over there. So we'll get this unsoldered and then we'll pull this all out. And if you turn this over, you notice there are these four these these four terminals that are slightly larger than the rest. It's this one, this one, this one, and this one. All four of those are for the fuse. Now what I'm going to do to make this easy, I'm going to cut this off. You want to be really careful when you're doing this so you don't damage it. I'm just going to cut the ends of this off so it's a little easier to get out. You don't want to damage any of the surrounding components. I'm just going to gently heat it up and work the fuse out now. And that's the thermal fuse. It's got four wires on the bottom, plastic casing. I'll pry the plastic casing apart. It's just got these little tabs on either end. So we'll get that off. So that is the uh, thermal fuse and resistor assembly. It's got these little wire guides in there that are holding the two pieces in. You want to be careful with the resistor because we're going to be reusing that. We'll pop this out. Now we got just the uh, fuse things, and they got this little clip on them. This little copper colored clip. So we'll just get that off. Should just pop right off. There we go. Now this is the 15 ohm resistor. I'm going to save that. And this is the thermal fuse. The new fuses are a little bigger than the old fuses. As long as it fits in that case, it shouldn't be much of an issue. Okay, so I've confirmed the markings on this fuse. That it is 168. This fuse I ordered is 167. It says 167 right on the side. You probably can't see that. But anyway, I'll bend those and get it back in there. Take the resistor now. Use this clip. The purpose of the clip is to hold them together. All the pins bent back so they'll fit in their normal spots. 
the slightly larger fuse does fit, although due to its the, having the same temperature rating, it shouldn't be an issue. Get that all nice in there. It's going to be a little snug fit, but that's alright. So we'll do the fuse first. Point four. That's about. That's one hundred percent continuity for this meter. That's what it usually reads. And I'll read this one. Right at uh, right at fifteen ohms. Once it settles. Okay. So now we'll resolder that onto the board. And I got the uh, fuse all taken care of. And you're gonna want to put this in here first, and then solder it from the back side. Now you're gonna have to get the. You have to get the old solder out of the holes. What I did. So I put the soldering iron in there, took a little blower, and blew it that way in a direction with le little, few electrical components. And that puts like a little powder of metal on there and just wipe the metal off. And now clear that all up so you can slide this in easily. Just put this in now. Direct the uh, resistor leads into their holes. Okay, so I got the fuse all in. White side goes this way, the same way it came out. It doesn't really matter which way it goes, but it's best to have it the right way. Now I got to solder it from the back side. Just want to get a nice little pool around each of those terminals. And then after that, we'll clip it, clip the ends, and leave it nice and neat. I'm actually going to take this outside and plug it in and make sure it works real quick. So that'll be easier to unsolder and resolder it in case it doesn't work for some reason. Okay, so I took it out there. It was raining, but I went out there and plugged this in real quick. And it's working now. So now, take these clippers. We'll just trim the ends of these. Don't want to trim them too short. Just to the top of the soldering joint. Okay, well now that I got the uh, AEM uh, thermal fuse all put back together, it's all nice and neat in there. Soldered it up really well. Now we're going to reassemble it, prepare it for reinstallation. I'm just going to slide it in there. Connector goes into that slot, of course. Just like that. And we'll put the uh, the uh, mounting plate and cover piece on. It's got connector lit written right here, so that's the end that goes over the connector. So just place that on there. And gently snap it back down. Be careful not to break anything. And there we go. All fixed and ready for installation. Yeah, I took a couple mile trip a little bit ago, and got the airbag all reinstalled. You can see that's actually the uh, wireless unit, the airbag, and that mounts to the little metal piece that was on the airbag module. So we'll get the keys now. Now this was flashing a code 51 before on the airbag light, so we'll turn it on now. Until the airbag light comes on. Now it goes off, and it'll just stay off like that, just like it's supposed to. So, problem solved. I haven't smelt any burning plastic or anything, so I don't think there's any issues. Just uh, hook up the chime and see if you can see the uh, module or not. I can't tell from that angle, but it's right in there, right behind that wireless airbag or wireless entry module. So, there you go. $55 repair for, uh, cost me 8 bucks with shipping for those three. So if you only ordered one, you could get it for, like, 3 bucks. You just fix something for 3 bucks that most places would charge you 55 bucks for. So, that's it for now.